Hello everybody and welcome to this um, video on A-level choreography. So we're going to look today at using choreographic devices in your own choreography. So going through the um, mock scheme specification, um, so you can, hear, you can see here that it's split at the top. You should have seen this, should be familiar with this. So we have section one, which is selection of movement components. Selection two, which is manipulation of movement components. Then you have section three, which is structuring of movement material. Section four, which is use of other constituent features such as oral setting, physical setting. Um, and then we have the use of other constituent features, i.e. the use of dancers. So I've selected here the top bands, so getting seven to eight marks in each of the bands. And today specifically, we're just going to look at where that yellow arrow is. So manipulation of the movement components, which is if we read uh, the seven to eight band, exceptional ability to manipulate the movement components through the use of choreographic devices in relation to your group choreography and the dance idea. So if you're super familiar with this, you'll see that every single one of them links to the dance idea. Of course, we are always linking back to the stimulus, the choreographic idea, the choreographic intention, what you've created. Um, so that is relevant throughout all of this. But today specifically, I just want us to be very clear on the choreographic devices and understanding how we can use them in order to achieve that seven to eight, that top mark band. So remembering that we're in that category, that manipulation of the movement components, and you're going to manipulate the movement components by using the choreographic devices. So here are the seven choreographic devices laid out in the specification that you need to know. So we are going to now go through these and define these. Um, so you might want to make a list of these if you want to write these down, um, but we will be defining them, so you might want to leave enough space. So number one is motif and motif and development. Number two is variation. Number three is repetition. Number four is contrast. Number five is highlights. Number six is climax. And number seven is transitions. Okay, let's start with number one, so motif and motif and development. So super important that we understand what this is, so then we can use it practically in our own choreography. So let's start with a motif. So a motif is a movement phrase encapsulating an idea that is repeated and developed throughout the dance. So it's essentially a short, small phrase of movement that then can be varied, manipulated, changed and developed throughout. So it, this motif is going to kind of start you off, but you're going to change it and develop it to form new and original movement. So motif development, therefore, is ways in which a movement phrase can be varied. OK, so how the different ways that you are changing that movement phrase. So that is motif and development. We're going to go through a bit more in detail motif and development, looking at this next table. Um, just pause the video if you need to, to write down those definitions. Okay, so motif and development. And of course, you can change a motif by changing the actions, the space, the dynamics and the relationships. So let's go through how we might change these. So first of all, we have the actions. How are we going to change the actions of a motif? So it might be embellishment. Now, embellishment is adding that extra bit of sparkle almost. So it might be adding an arm movement, might be adding a shoulder roll, might be adding a flex foot on the end. It's adding, embellishing that final element. Retrograde. Retro meaning kind of in the past, going backwards. So retrograde is when you perform a movement backwards. So you might take your original motif and think, I'm going to use retrograde on that movement. So therefore, you'd perform it backwards. And therefore, you have developed it. You have varied it. Fragmentation. Now, fragmentation is splitting up a motif into maybe five different chunks, let's say, reordering the motif into different into a different order. Um, so it might be 
um, that the beginning is now in the middle, whereas the ending of the motif might be the start of the motif. So you've changed it into fragments, you've split it up and you've reordered it and therefore it's a new motif. Okay, instrumentation. Instrumentation is when you have performed a certain movement on a certain body part and you just keep that movement but you change the body part. So for example, if it if I had if I was circling my head county court clockwise I could use instrumentation and circle my hips counterclockwise that would be developing your motif through instrumentation okay so that is how we develop through actions let's move on to space lots of ways you can develop space you could of course change the pathway so it might be that you performed it originally just on a simple straight pathway you might then want to develop your motif by changing it into a zigzag pathway Levels, of course, so distance from the ground. Are you on a high, are you on a medium, or are you on a low level? Directions, of course, where you're facing. So you are you did you start facing the side, the front, diagonal, the back? Size of movement, really nice one for developing. So it might be that the original motif was a small uh, piece of movement and then you could develop it into a large piece of movement. Patterns, spatial designs. So the design and pattern that is created on the floor could also be uh, a spatial pattern uh, in relation to all of your dancers. Where are they in space? What pattern are they creating? What shape are they creating? Okay, so that's covered actions and space. Moving on to dynamics. So really simple, contrasting your dynamics. It could be that it goes from fast to slow could be that you're changing the dynamics completely. It was maybe a flowing dynamic and then you uh, change it to a sudden dynamic. So really playing with the speed, with the flow of the movements. And finally, we have relationships. Tons of relationships. I'm actually gonna create another video explaining all of these relationships because you can go into a lot of detail into these. But just to refresh your memory, you have lead and follow, mirroring, action reaction, accumulation, complement and contrast, counterpoint, contact, formations, unison and canon. So with this being a group choreography, um, you if you haven't picked a solo, you can have lots of relationships using multiple of dancers. Okay, number two, this, so we've covered motif and development, which is our first choreographic device. Uh, choreographic device number two, variation. So it's changing something, having a variation, a variant of something, a different or distinct form or version of something, varying something. So very similar to motif and development. However, it doesn't need to keep repeating. It can just be one change or variant. Repetition, so really simple, repeating that action, performing the same action or phrase again. Um, contrast, so movements or shapes that have nothing in common. So there might be a moment of complete contrast. Um, I encourage you to pause this video now and write down these definitions. Okay, number five, highlights. So important moments of a dance. So notice that moments with an S, meaning that there's more than one. So there's going to be more than one highlight throughout your choreography. So you're going to want to think of when are the moments that you really want to highlight and are going to be important moments. So it's almost figuring out the light and the shade of your choreography. Um, whereas climax, which is linking to highlights, is the most significant moment of the dance. So there's only one climax that's going to be the most important, most significant moment. However, there are going to be many highlights throughout the dance. There can be more than one highlight, but there's only going to be one climax. Super important to figure that out. And in relation to the dance idea, how are these going to portray your dance idea? How are the highlights going to help you draw the audience's attention to those important moments? making sure that the climax obviously relates strongly to your dance idea as that is going to be the most significant moment of the dance. And finally, choreographic device number seven, transitions. So that's the links between the dance phrases or the sections. 
So making sure that you have unique, exciting transitions so that they almost don't seem like transitions. We don't want to clearly see that the, you've moved from a static section to another static section and it halts the dance. We want smooth transitions that links to your dance idea. So again, I encourage you to pause the video here and just write down these definitions. Okay, so we have understood all of the choreographic devices now, and I've just briefly whizzed through them with some definitions so that you understand them. But the trick is to use them practically and to use them wisely so that they are supporting your dance idea. Remember, that is how we're getting the top band, is that th you can use these, but that they also support and show your dance idea strongly. Um, so this is just a quick task to whiz through your um, choreography. You're going to be at different stages. So uh, have a think of maybe what choreographic devices you're missing, um, what choreographic devices you've already got. You might just want to quickly write down a checklist. Probing, challenging, clarifying and building on choreographic ideas. Again, this is going to be different if you're at different stages. <clears throat> but I would like you just to um, have a think of these questions and these are now going to always be on here so if you need a reminder of these questions whilst you're choreographing uh, or whilst you're reflecting on your piece I would encourage you to read these questions and try to answer them and um, these are of course meant to build clarify challenge and probe okay Final task now, depending on what stage you are in your choreographic process, if you're kind of right at the beginning, this is your task. You're going to go away, go onto YouTube and try and identify any of these choreographic devices in any professional works. OK, now you might want to use some of the professional works you already know about, whether that's Sutra, whether that's Rooster, um, to find these choreographic devices. So I'd like you to uh, write down some notes, so make sure that you've either put Rooster or Sutra, whichever one you're looking at, and just write down some notes of where those choreographic devices can be seen and how they're helpful. Now, if you're further along in your own choreography, I'd like you to look back at videos of your own choreography and identify any choreographic devices you have already used. And I want you to specifically write how these are helpful in supporting your dance idea. If you haven't included any yet, I would like you to write down next to each choreographic device why you might use these choreographic devices and how they're going to support your choreographic intention and dance idea. So a variety of tasks there, depending on what stage you're at. Feel free to do both to maybe see it in a professional light and then reflect on your own choreography as well. But super important that you're now evaluating your work. Where are these choreographic devices? How are they going to help me achieve the seven to eight mark ban? If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. But that was just a quick overview of choreographic devices in A-level choreography.